Kevin Painter, one of the best known faces in the sport of darts and has been, I'm sorry for saying this, Kevin, for what, more than three decades now. Um, you, Chris. Just let us know where it all started for you and how it all came about. Well, I mean, when I was younger, it was football, football all the time for me. You know, I was about 15 years old then and then in the evenings, finding something to do, put a dartboard up and sort of took to it. And uh, like a lot of youngsters nowadays, you know, you, you get hooked on it and just got really good really quickly and just it just carried on from then, yeah. As we saw at the seniors recently that you had a shirt in tribute to Eric Bristow. Did you have people like Eric to look up to and aspire to, to be yeah. like? Eric was my hero back then. I just loved the way he went about stuff on the hockey. It was like it's nuts. The, the, I know it's sort of the arrogance and the sort of confidence mixed in together. Um, yeah, just he just sort of... Um, he sort of intimidated players, but all legally, you know, no, no, no silly stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's just, of course, uh, what a man, yeah. There is, we'll talk about your sort of demeanour and stuff on stage. There is kind of that streak in you, isn't there? You're one of my favourite players to watch, and I know a lot of other people say this because you do have that sort of stage presence. Is that a, a construct or is that just you being yourself? No, I think it's, a lot of it is just myself. Uh, I sort of, um, it's the... Determination to win. Um, I don't like losing. That's obvious. I think if you don't mind losing, I, I don't think you're going to go too far in a game. You have to hate losing. You you have to try right till the death to win your game. And you know sometimes when I'm like losing games, I'm digging in and trying. And it doesn't always work. Obviously, the later on you go in your career and that things are harder and harder. But no, I think I survived over the years. This is my 28th year as a professional dart player. Um, I think I survived through the, you know, the passion and the determination to do well, you know. Have you mellowed a little bit? I mean, we've still seen a few reactions and stuff here at the, the Super Series, or have you still got that exact same will to win? Yeah, I wouldn't say I've mellowed at all, no. I still... The trouble is, Chris, it's, it's the inconsistency now. My brain still thinks that I'm as good as I used to be, and yet I, I have a job accepting that, of course, I'm not as good as I used to be when I was at my peak. You know, I found things very sort of not easy to win, but I found it sort of easy to play well. It's now the older I've got, you know, it's harder to play well. The inc I like to sort of say I'm sort of consistently inconsistent, um, and, and it's just harder to play your best at all, all times. You know, I'm having me moments, of course, I'll have a great game, and then next thing you're playing, and you're like, hey, where, where's this come from? You know, you did win stuff in your career. Um plenty of stuff, including a big one as well, which we'll come on to. But perhaps most remembered is a defeat, that, that famous final in 2004 mm. against Phil Taylor. What are your memories of that? Well, I mean, it was a great final, obviously, right at the start of the week. Um, I was feeling good. I had some good wins during the week, beat some good players, beat Bob Anderson in the final at the time. Bob was playing fantastic, beat him 6-0 in the semi-final. Um, and, of course, when you play Phil, Phil was at his peak then. And everyone had me down for a 7-1, perhaps 7-2 sets defeat. But I fancied my chances on the day and I got stuck right into it. And uh, yeah, it was so close. The only disappointing thing for me was I didn't get a shot at a double. I think we played on stage for three and three quarter hours. And I just didn't get a shot at a double to win it, which is disappointing. But listen, you know, a lot of people remember that final. It was one of the greatest finals ever. And um, yeah, I didn't do too bad, you know. Is it something then that you look back on with enormous pride rather than any regret at all? Well, of course, I'd love to have won it, but listen, there's not many people who are going to play in a World Championship final, um, especially against Phil Taylor. So, um, and to play so well, you know, um, I'm, I'm proud of the way I played back then, you know. As I say, it's disappointing. I never got a, got a shot. I, I had a couple of good leads as well in that 4-1 and 5-3, but Phil being Phil just uh, does what he does, you know. You like proving people wrong as well, don't you? I, I remember when you won the Players' Championship finals back in 2011 and the first thing you said was something like, have that Stuart Pike, because he'd kind of written you off, hadn't he? Uh, yeah, Pike, he was one of these um, guys that, after I'd lost that final, he thought that that was going to damage me so much I perhaps would never win another tournament. And for a while, um, he, he, was, he was right, but I was still playing well, still... And, went on and won the um, Players' Championship. Um, and it was funny because that week I wasn't really um, going into that event 
on any sort of form and I just got better and better as it went. It just shows you that sometimes, you know, you don't have to be on magic form to go in and, and do good things. And again, just going back to what we were saying earlier about your, your presence on stage, that you, you let the audience know when you're frustrated and when you're enjoying yourself. Um, we saw a real outpouring of emotion when you finally kind of scaled that mountain. What was that feeling like when you'd finally done it? Well, it's, it's an amazing thing because obviously you, sometimes, you know, of course you, you doubt, is it ever going to happen? Are you ever going to win a big title? There's going to be better dark players than me that never win a major title. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy I've done it. I deserve to do it, in my opinion. Um, of course, after that, I got put in the Premier League. I only played in Premier League once. I think I should have played in it a few more times, but, you know, the powers that be didn't think so. But, no, of course, um, I'm proud of what I've done. You know, I'm proud of still being around 28 years after starting as a pro. There's a lot of players that come in and they they go rise up the rankings and then suddenly they disappear after a few years and I'm still about. Do you think you get enough credit for what you achieved in your career? You were around at a time when Phil Taylor was dominating everything. So it's kind of difficult for, for all of the other top players to get the credit they deserve because they weren't offered on the role of honour? No, I mean, listen, I've, I've won World well, 1 and that's it. Um, you could say that about everybody who was in the Eric Bristow era when Eric was dominating the game and everyone who was in the game when Phil was about, you know, they could all say, well, if it weren't for Phil, I'd have done this and I'd done that. It, we're where we are with that, you know. Um, Phil dominated the game and the rest of us had to um, either be runners-up or semi-finalists or whatever it was at the time. Right now, we seem to be in an era where the titles are being shared out a little bit more uh, mm. between the, the current top players. What do you make of the state of the game at the top level now? Oh, the standard of darts now is incredible, you know. Um, we're seeing averages that are going through the roof. You know, the lads always talk about, you know, how much higher can the standard get? I mean, they might have to make the trebles on the board a bit smaller. Instead of making them bigger, like they did a few years ago, they should make them smaller and play on the old nodal boards that we used to play play on them back in the 80s and uh, have a bounce at every other dot. But uh, no, standard's absolutely outrageous now. And the youngsters coming through, I mean, they're just, you know, they're, they're setting, the, the bar will just keep going higher and higher at the moment. How high it gets is another thing. Uh, back to yourself, you made the decision a few years ago now to not go and try and get your tour card back and play in the PDC anymore. That was actually before the, the Super Series and the seniors and things like that had come about. Um, but obviously you've still got like, the desire to play darts and you still enjoy it. So these kind of concepts have been ideal for where you are, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to... Chris, I'm 55 years old. I'm not going to start a whole new career of going on the Pro Tour, trying to get back on the Pro Tour. I, I have to be honest with myself... I wouldn't be averaging 100 every week. You know, we know the standard I'm at at the moment. I'm, I'm enjoying this mode of Super Series. It's fantastic. Um, and of course, the seniors has, you know, started up as well, which is great. So when I announced that I wasn't going to do anything, I just thought I was going to be doing my exhibitions. And then, of course, this sort of stuff started up. And uh, it's fantastic for uh, people like myself. And now we can keep going and, and keep trying to do our best, you know? Is it important for you, because you described yourself earlier as someone who hates losing, that you've got that competitive streak, so to be doing something that is competitive, not just sort of fun exhibitions, is that ideal for you? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, when I packed up, I thought I would just play in a few opens and things like that, and, I'd, and it wouldn't bother me too much if I, what I'd done, but once you get back on the stage, and there's obviously the stage of the seniors and everything, them old feelings come back and I still get competitive and I don't like it when I lose and I don't like it when I don't play well. The frustrating thing for me is I don't like like it when I don't play well. As I said earlier, I think sometimes you still think you're as good as you used to be, but I'm frustrated. I'm doing it in bits and pieces. You know, you saw yesterday when I played um, Chris, who topped the group. Um, you know, I had a great win, a couple of nice shot outs. That's the sort of thing I feel like I should be doing a bit more often. A lot of time you drift off, your confidence goes a little bit and, and your concentration goes. And um, But I will still keep giving it as much as I can, as long as I can. We'll just talk about the seniors a little bit as well, because, I mean, there was a fantastic moment when you returned to the Circus Tavern, played Phil Taylor in the quarterfinals at the World Championship last year, yeah. beat him. It was a long time coming. How yeah. was that moment for you? Well, it was OK. I mean, obviously, beating Phil there is not like beating Phil when he was at his peak. So, you know, it wasn't overly like jumping around the room and, you know, it's, it wasn't one of them sort of wins. Of course, to me, it was another win. 
and I was on to the semi-finals. But obviously, it's nice to to play Phil again there, and um, everyone knows Phil's not playing it like he used to be, and um, well, neither am I. So, you know, it's nice to get the win, and uh, it's great to play back at the tavern again, of course. What are the ambitions now then for you? You're playing in, in the Super Series, you're playing in, I think, all of the seniors' events so far. Um, is there still that desire to win? Can we hope and expect to see you lifting one of the trophies? Yeah, I, th I think I'm capable of winning one of the seniors' things, but I have to raise my game and, and get more consistent, Chris. It's, it's just I'm, I'm doing too many games where I play well there and then like, the next game it's not very good. It's difficult to do that. It is when you when you're not playing at that competitive level like I used to be. You know, I don't play in anything now. I don't play. You know, when you're on the pro tour, it's bang, bang, bang. You know, Chris, as we've spoke about, Chris Lamman, who's, who played there this week, he's just come off of pro tour weekend. You're playing against top class players. Obviously, if you're not on the pro tour, you're finding things to do. I'm playing little local opens and things like that when I can. It's all about finding a bit of consistency for me and, and, and seeing if I can go on from that, you know. Well, we look forward to seeing if you can do it. Watch this space. Kevin Painter still competitive as ever. Thanks, Kev. Thank you, Chris.